We'll do one more random random run here on C25 with the following. No, I'm not doing another remnant run with the following. Deck of cards. Shardtail Queen to start with two Bounding Echoes, two Fortifies, and a Tiresome Climb. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, I'm looking forward to trying to make Shardtail Queen work again. Oh man, with double Bounding Echoes, Lost Luggage seems actually insane here, giving us an opening 10-card hand that we can then essentially just infuse everything with. Hmm. So, do we go Imperialist? Which kills all imps every turn to do area damage, or the Royalty version gets much stronger every time a unit's summoned on her floor. But Royalty is very difficult to keep alive. That's what I've mostly noted. Very low base health makes her extremely difficult to work around. She needs either front tail front line tanks or something else. What are the full stat progressions for these three variants? Royalty is 10, 15, 25. The Imperials gets significantly better health and base damage too. All right, I'll try Imperialist. I like this version. Do I dare take the show the dollars? I do. I do dare. I keep doing that until I figure out why it's wrong. And I'm also gonna take an early unit draft. This is disciples plus priests. Giving them plus four is not too bad. Especially if I use chump blockers for our queen. Oh yeah, look at that. Glorious. We can even infuse the Shartail Queen herself here. That's going to give us a lot more charged echoes, the unique mechanic of the Wormkin. You can have up to four of them per floor, and they're used to fuel the special abilities of many Wormkin cards. Suppose we want her lower rather than higher, so that she has better ability to use these implings. All right. I'll put a steward in front of her, so that she can hurl imps from behind. Something like that. That maxes out the shards on this floor. Or shards on floor two. If I give this guy armor five, he lives the six, dies to the nine. Queen gets to do her thing again. So we'll go Queen Zimpling here. Armor the steward. You almost die, use this here. And now this forged disciple is easily stopped by a single steward. Fortunately, this is not the turn to draw the Implings. You can also just kill her by playing an Impling. That would let me put Steward in front of the Queen for at least a little bit more damage. But I think we're going to pretty uselessly use lose the Queen next turn. It's going to be sad. Because I am unlikely to redraw any of these Imps. And if I deploy them now, she simply kills them. Right, so... Yeah. Let's both go up top. All right, buddies. Good luck to you two. All 
Armor the one in front, of course. some climb him, that would mean the pyre would do some damage. I don't think it's worth it, though. Better to just, like, impling, weight of contrition, echo break. That'll be more than 40 damage, which is what the tiresome climb essentially does. I could also go impling tiresome climb. Not the worst idea. It's a sad outcome that we have to finish this guy with the pyre. Also, Echo Break summon another Impling. Interesting. Wait, is that correct? To take the three damage, deal ten more here. Instead of bringing him to 49, which is three hits on the pyre, we bring him to 39, which is two hits on the pyre. It saves me three health. Hooray! Optimization. And this just kind of feels like what happens with the Shartail Queen a lot of the time on floor one to me. Oh. Yes, to imps. Probably want the one that's infused. This is particularly great for the royalty version, but um, we can also just have the Welder Helper then deploy behind the Shardtail Queen each turn if we get an Endless or something. Three Extract cards, very curious. We've got good Echo Generation, and I actually think if we can generate now um, armor for the Shardtail Queen, if we can scale her damage, or the damage of any unit that we're creating, then we have a, a successful scaling solution. Armor every turn could further help the defense game. Armor five to friendly units every turn. I rather like that, uh, provided we're doing enough damage output, which we certainly could argue that we're not, especially when it comes to one single target. Simply boosting the Echo, the Shardtail Queen with Echo Transfer one time is not going to cut it. Maybe to that end, we then need something like Horned Warrior here for his multi-strike damage output. Great Echo Transfer recipient he is. Hmm. Difficult choices. I think I'll take the Horned Warrior. I'm going to lean more offensive rather than defensive here. Because I tend to find that when I take Shardtail Queen, that's why I lose, is I don't do enough damage. Things just waltz past me to the pyre. And then I cry. Probably want to go Merchant of Steel then to get this thing upgraded a bit. That also gives me a chance at getting Endless on this Welder Helper, which would be fantastic. Quick. Oh, that's a great upgrade for uh, Hornbreaker. Or Horn Warrior, excuse me. And I kind of like the idea of giving him the Echo Stone. Increasing his damage per charged Echo on the floor. Although if I'm using an Echo Transfer to Extract, I don't think that's going to work out. Either way, a quick Horned Warrior is a real monster. And if we can get him to do significantly increased damage somehow, it's going to be great. Maybe just give him plus 10. No nonsense. Does mean he's relatively vulnerable, but I have ways to give him armor. With the fortifies. And with the welder helper. Okay, let's just go no nonsense. The strength stone. Am I sure about that? How many echoes do I think I'll have in run? Either zero or tons, not sure which. Do the more fun option, when in doubt. I was probably supposed to look at this uh, before I assigned all those upgrades, huh? 
I got very committed to my warrior. What do we got here? Oh, heck yes. Yes. An excellent infusion. Just make the really big man. And the rest will follow. Wait, do we have a divine temple? Not yet. It's fine. Give me the big man. Hmm. Playable big man. Intriguing. Easy forever flame for me here, personally. Um, we want to play imps, and imps cost energy currently, so if all the imps are free, we're going to save a lot of energy. And it's also going to help me immediately, because being able to play this demon fiend uh, will absolutely help me survive this combat. Not planning on upgrading the demon fiend, nor paying for the reroll in the Merchant of Steel. What I maybe should have done is pay 60 gold to remove one steward, though. Can I deal with this trial? Yeah, yeah, I should be able to. Hmm. Oh, right, and he's free, so I can just play them both on turn one. Oh, my. Also, everyone's infused. Easy. Alright, I'm gonna put Shirt Tail Queen on the bottom then. With this lad. And we're going to put Horned Warrior Demon Fiend on top. The big boys. You can do some tanking for me. Although you might be better. Happy to take the five. Rather prevent damage down here. Let's go as follows. It's only four. Dang. Beautiful turn one. Basically, everybody was dealt with. Um, but now the collector's a problem. Because I have to use the imp to get them. Guess that's not the biggest deal in the world. Sure, Tail Queen will be fine. Boys up top will definitely be fine. Better up here, yeah? Gotta be. Oh, that's right, you've got sweep. Well, I should probably be putting armor on the back guy then. We knew that too. Or shame. Sweep means the implings don't matter if they're in back or in front, they just die. Brutal. At least I can play everything. Good news is the Demon Fiend easily just kills this guy.
flap. All right, we got our bonus money. Ooh, Ascend? Interesting option. We already have Ascend in the form of... Tiresome Climb. More Imps are also a fairly reasonable option here. Yeah, I think one of the quickest and easiest ways to win on Hellhorn to take a bunch of units, make them big and good, and then just ascend them. It's that simple. That would prevent us from playing units on the same floor as Sharktail, unless Sharktail's on our own floor, maybe. Not sure. Either way, I'll just take more stuff. Ooh, Proclamation does big damage to the front enemy units. Really like that as a way to chunk through those problematic single targets that took us down last run. And again, we're generating plenty of charged echoes. I'll be grabbing that. It's actually a good place for a Hellvent. We could infuse the Demon Fiend into the Horned Warrior and then duplicate the Horned Warrior. So we have two of this unit now. Um, it'll be a 45 by 2 with 35 health, 3 capacity, 0 cost, with quick. That's pretty potent. Or I can look at another unit and we can just add more of them. I think I'm going to go double warrior, though. Feels pretty strong. Very good approach in a monster train run. Often just take a really good card and start duplicating it. Minus two cost on Tiresome Climb, maybe. It's also Intrinsic... something. Although with a ten-card opening hand, the need for Intrinsic seems reduced. Um, we should fuse before we go here, just in case something hilarious happens. More of a good card is very good. Oh. Well, that's a different kind of hilarious. Do you take something from the mystery man? Yeah. I think I will, sir. Dante's Candle. These are unpurgeable, one-cost blights. And if we don't play them, we take three damage. What Dante offers is power. The power to have a ridiculous multi-striker unit as part of what you're doing. I'm going a few too many shards. But this value stone might be overly ambitious. Although... I really like it with the candles. The, making this cheaper because I have the candles. We can even infuse the candles and I'll gain echoes when I play them. That's pretty funny too. Eighty shards into Daedalus here. It's a little aggressive. Just a little bit. But don't worry about it. These lads don't even spit on the same floor as each other, just initially. Hmm. So we'll have to send them to get them onto the same floor. Very well. Let's see, double echo break. Okay, yes, yeah, so I can play everything. Good. So we'll actually just kill you. So Shardtail Queen here. Queen Zimpling behind her. Two damage. Three damage. Play this. You go here. You go here. Who gets the armor? You're going to be the one in front when the boss arrives. So let's make it you. Hmm. 
I can tiresome climb the bomb, which makes the bomb dazed, and then it won't detonate. I'm doing it. Stinky bomb. Perfect. And we've actually managed to get an enemy behind a bomb here. <laughs> I don't know if I've seen that before. It's pretty funny. Yes, infuse these candles. Good. And I guess you're going up top now. It's fine. The echoes here makes them stronger. <laughs> two enemies behind a bomb, and two bombs on the same floor. What is happening? Hello? Claim this guy dead. Doesn't do a whole lot for me. Yes, I will. You're dead. Easy answers. this just for the charge deco on the floor, I guess? It's technically worth it to play these on the back one to replenish the charge decos. Don't tiresome climb the boss. That's a really quick way to lose here. Bad idea. Impolite's back, and it's actually pretty good doing 90 damage and being infused. That seems all right to me. Not really benefiting a whole lot from Wormkin Spike. Don't have any eggs. There's an egg. Spire plus two armor two. Could take another unit here if we wanted to. I think it's extremely reasonable to add more big, powerful units at this time. Especially if I go to this Merchant of Steel. Maybe this Wormkin better. Oh, actually, no, right, that's right, we have Dante. We have Dante coming up, so what we want to do is grab a unit that we can infuse into Dante 
Plus five per strike is particularly hilarious on Dante, as Dante is the multi-striker to end all multi-strikers. Carver into Dante, also fairly acceptable, giving stat scaling, armor, some decent health. Take that Alpha Fiend, though. Alpha Fiend Dante is amazing. Not sure I want more card draw. More capacity actually seems nice to help me get initially set up a little bit more easily. Let's take first pick Light of Seraph. Since I've got the lost luggage for the card draw, the forever flame for the energy generation. And I guess we won't go to the Merchant of Steel because we want to go to the Merchant of Steel after picking up Dante. It's probably going to be this Merchant of Steel here. So we'll avoid this Merchant and Vortex, get the money. One more Wormkin unit to look at. Maybe it's Glug Cider. Wouldn't that be nice? How often do you fill up all three floors? Very rarely. Only once in a blue moon does a ridiculous enough run come by to make it worthwhile. It's not a glug setter. Just Shard Soul and Carapace. I think I would skip both of these. No thanks. And what do we got here? Intrinsic minus two cost. Also no thanks. Yeah, those are unpurgeable. So, one of the upgrades we can get to the Queen is more imp damage. The other option is add an imp to your hand each turn. And imps are cheaper on her floor, so she's always creating her own fodder, so to speak. Not sure how useful that is. I mean, it gives her guaranteed AoE damage, which is nice, but if you can't play the imps, it's a bit of a problem. But since I took plus capacity, I think it's actually a pretty good idea. Second tier of imp parade is... Rage imps, I think? Something like that. Does she give you armor imps at the third tier? Hold on. Something fledgling imp. Fledging imp and a welder helper. Yes, you get welder helpers? That's crazy. But then she does not killing them. So I guess that's reasonably balanced. Add consume onto this? Not sure. No, I think I need to be able to use that over and over again. Remove consume on the bounding echoes. That's pretty funny. And I'm gonna go this way, next floor. I might even dupe the Horned Warrior again, which would be quite a choice. And then Merchant of Steel. So let's purge just two cards. Turning Stewarts. Can I deal with Spikes 4? Probably? Maybe with probably. And we have lots of pyre health, in case I'm completely off base there. To think we were once allies.
Now we're unallies. So nice that every card in my deck is free. That way I can always play the candles. Two big boys go up top. That's our last line of defense, but what's the first line of defense? Short tail queen getting bonked in the face repeatedly? Well, shield one, so I'll need to echo break proclamation down here. Okay. That's right, there is room, actually, if I play them both, thanks to plus capacity. Yes, yeah, so we'll go Shard Tail Queen, Alpha Fiend in front. Please stay alive. think I'm not killing you. Easy. Okay, we lose the Alpha Fiend. That's honestly fine. Some more damage here. It's really the top two floors that are going to carry it all anyway. We have four waves remaining. Can't expect our Bean Boys to do all of that on their own now, can we? Thorns are annoying, but I knew they would be. Blam! 135 damage. I was wondering if it would increase as she summoned more implings. I think it even counts the ones in the consume pile. That's cool. It's a really strong card. Fair amount of health here. Six Thorns guys in particular hurt big time. Hmm. Let's move you up. Might even want to put her behind. Those guys. Okay, no thorns at least. So we can use Tiresome Climb on her to put her on the top floor. The days won't be a problem. I think that's the choice here. Play this up top for the infused. Yeah, having her do 20 damage in back is going to be useful. And we're going to up more. 12? 16. Yes, that's an important number then.
Whereas this this one doesn't matter. So we start armoring here. If we draw the second one, then you'll be able to live another hit. There's no second one. Um, well, then I better go here. Not sure which of these matters more. Better to put it here. Put that to the plus one. Oh, good. Okay. We're well ahead of where we needed to be. And we did big damage, too. Bonk. Bonk. GG. Mostly looking to not lose before... Oh, man. Mostly not lose before Dante arrives. Carving Koriska for that. Super worth. Also, heck yes. Carving Koriska says, Anytime we play a card with Extract, gain one Echo, gain one Energy. Both on the Echo Transfer and on the Proclamation. Beautiful. And you better believe I'll take an Infused Important Work. Gain one Energy, draw one for Sacrificing an Imp. That I make every turn anyway. Sure. Love a return soul too. Pick a spell card from the discard pile, make it cheaper, infused, and consume. So you can get rid of echo breaks or replay a hidden passage at a key moment. Or something like that. And of course this one's infused too. Ancient resonance could be some nice area damage. He's here. Ah, my loyal friend, what a pleasure to see you again. Please excuse my manners from before. I was rather occupied. My name is Dante. For carrying the load, I think I'll join you, if you'll have me. We get Dante's Cloak, plus two magic power for every blight card in the deck. I actually don't remember that. Uh, as well as Dante himself, who gains one multi-strike for every Blight card in the deck. Currently we have five Blights, so we are gaining five additional multi-strike on Dante and 10 additional magic power on all of our spells. That's pretty spicy-like. I believe I'm planning on going over here. Question is, what am I duplicating? I could dupe Dante himself. Curious option. without any upgrades, though. Do you think we'll be duping Dante? Probably here. But first... Rail spikes. Ooh, I can take an Awoken Rail Spike. Draw X cards and apply minus one cost to those. Don't really want Rage or Armor. Duping Impolate, that's actually a pretty good option. It's a pretty dang powerful card at the moment. Can I infuse the Alpha and then dupe our Dante Man? I can indeed do that. Ooh. Wait, I know what we're doing. We're duping Impolate with Spell Chain, I think. Also put piercing on Impolate, which is pretty good, but the spell chain's gonna be very, very powerful. And I really like piercing on the proclamation, actually. Yes, piercing on the proclamation, spell chain on the Impolate. This is a lot of shards we're about to go to. But trust me, the deck will be mighty powerful. Really like to get this Dante to be quick, if we can. One hundred and forty shards going into Ring Five. That is pretty spooky. When there's a stealth boss headed our way. Wait a minute. Hmm. 
That's a problem. We don't have no ways to survive, though. But I'll have to be very careful with how I do this. See would sweep there, you stinky. Still, I think I need to make Dante get some scaling. It's imperative. I know what that means we have to do. Yes. C. So it's as follows. This is a weird turn. Not 100% sure if it's correct. Oh, I can also use return soul, so I don't have to necessarily ascend. I like that more. Do it the following way then. But you want him to be able to attack a bunch of times, right? Right, that involves this, then. So, he'll get hit by the sweep, but Dante will scale. Scale a lot. So each attack actually does more than the last. Wow. Meaning plus five per attack he makes. Now he's at 33 by six. Beautiful. Just beautiful. Be careful with these imps. was infused into Dante the Alpha Fiend, which is what is giving him uh, plus five damage permanently every time he makes one attack, which he does six times per turn. So that's nice, you know? We need maximum keeping things alive to occur here. Okay, we have to 
save you? Hmm. He's a great Echo Transfer recipient, too. Not think about that. Problem is, he needs to stay alive through the stealth boss's shenanigans. Five imps on this floor will waste five turns of stealth from the boss. Want to make sure he gets to attack. Spell shield, though? Good. Okay, it's actually only 11 stacks of stealth, and I get to do this. Wait. Okay, so, what was that word about? I no longer remember. Something about stealth? Guess it's not important now. <laughs> This card's awesome for this deck. It's just too on point. I'm taking it. This is extract on it. Pretty good damage, too. Oh, that's right. We have super spell power because of Dante. That's right. Revenge of the Damned is pretty sweet, then. Extract one, deal 15 damage twice, then gain one energy and one echo, and two more echoes if I killed something. Sure, actually. Thank you, because of that bonus spell power. And now we get to go Merchant of Steel. Although this is a sweet, sweet line. Both, both sides of the fence here are just loaded with juicy goodness. We gotta go Merchant of Steel, because we want to be able to upgrade Dante. Ideally giving him quick, but we'll see. Echo Stone's also pretty dang good. Bonus damage per Echo. We're good at generating those. Endless Welder Helper is definitely something I did want to see, though. Apply armor 20 to the front enemy units. We can armor on the Queen's floor every turn now. Could also make Dante Endless. That's cute. Yeah, that's cute. Because he keeps the stat scaling even if he dies. Hmm. I would think about maybe giving him a health upgrade too, just to make sure it's not sad times immediately. You know? As follows. We'll give him a health upgrade. That's what I was looking for. Quick. Good stuff. Cards that I don't actually want. Historian! 
characterize yourself as honest, aggressive, or stealthy? I like honest here. Just a 40x gold gain one time. Seems fine. I have no complaint about such a card. A little late for the others to be that relevant. Sure, they're reusable, but there's only one more combat I can actually spend money after, so... We'll just take it and use it. And... Do I pay for a purge? Not yet. Do I take this money? Oh, actually, no, there are two combats. We haven't fought Arcus yet. I'm going to take that money then. Bring it on, Arcus. I think this deck is now in a very strong place. Does my Wormkin decks tend to end up in very silly lands? Oh, didn't draw an imp on turn one. Well, maybe I will with the Woken Rail Spike. So. Is for playing a spell on the bottom floor of this turn. I won't do that then. Easy. It's a free Dante's Candle. That's cool. I like that. If I put her on the bottom, she'll just perish. She can go in the middle. Oh wait, I can actually kill this guy. Only if I'm willing to make the other cards expensive though. Which I'm not willing to do. Okay, so just don't play any more cards here. I love Arcus's boss music. He's got such jamming jams, you know? The jamist. Let's die, okay. We'll be doing none of that. Sir. Just gain 80 gold, or can I do better? I feel like I can do better. Plates are absolutely devastating, but I don't want to play them because I want Dante to get angrier instead. It occurred to me that there's a strict limit with the Alpha Fiend scaling, because if Dante keeps killing everything, he can no longer scale. Problematic. Deeply problematic.
we just descend him to the top floor? Not that we need to. But that's a, theoretically the ideal stratagem here. So lots of damage via Impolate for 200 plus several times. Holy moly. That Dante. Can I give him one more multi strike? Doesn't seem that helpful. So 150 shards give you the max shard difficulty for divinity. No, there is no maximum. I repeat that. There is no maximum. You will give stat buffs to enemy bosses with direct proportionality to the number of shards you have. So 300 shards is twice as much bonus health attack, twice as many stacks of buffs, whatever, as uh, 150 would be. It's spooky. If you go into the many, many hundreds, it's really spooky. I don't know how many shards it takes to have all enemies be empowered. I think we want a little bit more card draw. Although the Dante's candles are a little bit annoying. I don't, certainly don't need the energy. Feels like we're very comfortable on six pips per floor. 405 shard run yesterday by Penguin? That's crazy. The mad lad. What? Merchant of Steel offers me absolutely nothing. Although one stable vortex is nice. We'll go to the Merchant of Trinkets, see if we can find a really good artifact to buy. Summon abilities happen twice is not bad, considering how many imps I have. Double armor off the Endless Welder Helper. 20 damage implings. How many cards do we have that say consume? Lots. So consume echoes would also be very good. And we can actually just buy both of these. An 8,000 health divinity, wow. Pretty silly. So, Rage Imps instead of Implings seems... Gonna be a lot of Rage, actually, and that lets me... Rage Dante? That's actually really good. Yeah, actually. We can give Dante even more attack power. Sure. Don't mind if I do. Hard counters me, huh? <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Hard counters me. Okay. Oh, I forgot to use this. Shoot. I want to spell Chain Return Soul. With zero attack from the sap, Dante won't attack, therefore he can't get started. Oh, interesting. Hmm. However, that's exactly what the Rage Imps are for. We can use those to stop that. Actually, also, if you're endless should do this. And that actually makes spell chain important work pretty good too. I'll purge one of these echo breaks. I'm just all in on shards right now. I think that we're getting stronger at a faster rate than the shards are making our enemies stronger here. Although, how do we deal with enemy damage? 
Apparently the strategy is simply be quick. Actually, no, this, this thing will solve that, potentially. No hesitation on Heaven Seal. Zero. Might even benefit me. Hmm. Spikes three, he says. Still not good enough. Shard sheet? Oh, thank you. That would have been shard to figure out otherwise. Hmm. Can't tell if I'm supposed to try to deploy on the bottom floor. middle floor now. If I deploy in the middle, I can use the tiresome climb to put this guy in the middle and then uh, have Dante scale off of him a little bit. This guy's very problematic, actually, with Heaven Seal, huh? Hmm. How do I kill this thing? With uh, Impolate is the answer. That sounds like I shouldn't descend it then. So we want to set up on the bottom and ascend this thing? I think that's got to be right. Okay, this is going to go really well now. Looks like it was scary at first, but we have it. Trust me, we have it. it starts with this. This actually won't kill you, huh? Not unless I also put the Horned Warrior down? Okay, that's gonna happen then. Need to make sure this guy dies. This is fine to go to the Pyre Room. This only does, like, 12 damage to me. away, though. I could have prevented that with the Rage Imp on a different floor, though. But I wanted to get nerds on the bottom. I'm not going to need the money.
more energy so it can play Gift of Gratitude for even more money. Hard if I wish. Get him, Dante. He's not going to be able to really flex his muscles until we're able to fight the last divinity. And then I'm going to be able to actually use all of his attacks every turn. Which will be very, very, very silly. A Pirate Chomper gives me an awful lot of energy. Do I have a use for it? Not unless I draw it with the Awoken Rail Spike. I don't think that's good enough reason to take it. are all pretty whatever. Skip. Fewer cards, please. No need for Merchants of Steel, right? And we want even more dupes? Because maybe I want two Dantes now? Maybe I do want two Dantes. Certainly I want... A little late for Dunecho here. Gurg's Goad gives an additional multi-strike to our two Horned Warriors, who are pretty okay. We're not really using them anymore, but sure, make them stronger. Why not? A random imp each turn? Interesting. Unbroken Horn is great. Conserving energy between turns actually makes the Awoken Rail Spike very strong. I don't have really the capacity to play the imps from the Imsicle is the main problem. Still pretty good overall. I think. Or I can make important work permafrost. That way I never waste it. Sure. Here we roll. Ah, these aren't great. Oh, the cleansing water is nice. Chance to remove buffs is pretty good. Could have given Dante plus two on Slay. I suppose that's okay as well. Duke Dante, we're at 230 pack shards. It's been uh, definitely the highest I've taken in a while. Did we overstep our bounds here? Or is this going to work?
candles. I don't have to play the candles, but I do gain echoes for doing so. Is it kill there? Dante's not here. Putting Queen on the bottom accomplishes what exactly? Actually, have to put Dante on the bottom floor? Question mark. That's a little bit awkward. But yes, this looks like I'm gonna have to play Dante on the bottom floor. At least for now. I might get him killed, but I don't think it will. So, as previously discussed, Sap 3 prevents Dante from attacking which means he cannot scale his damage. That is certainly a problem. Or at least it would be. I wasn't able to give him a lot of rage to overcome that. And in fact, they are actually all dying now. We have a second Dante, too. Well, now, that complicates things somewhat. Here, up top. Put Dante behind her. Those are primary damage dealing thing of a jig. That's more like it. Assume we're winning? Oh yeah, we are. Boy, are we ever. I can also just, like, play the imp down here and kill them the old-fashioned way. Or I can also do something hilarious like this. Kill you. Play you here to give Dante armor. Now ascend you so the queen kills you. Sure. 
Sure, why not? Casually draw your cards, by the way. Why don't you pay a visit to the bottom floor, Dante? send you? I don't think it's going to matter. Zerf being down here is pretty much just going to get him killed. Fifteen by six on Seraph, by the way? Holy crap. Just casually does ninety damage per attack round. That's a lot of shards, man. Also check out the the last divinity's combat values here. Six thousand three hundred health. Sweep is nineteen damage top floor, twenty-two damage with trample bottom floor. 15 to I2 in the middle. Yikes. How do you deal with that? That's part of the question. Hmm. Oh, these have cans. Nope, not that. This. Have important work here. That might be crucial. We know the Dantes don't do that much damage on their first turn. Hmm. Can't put the Dantes anywhere without taking uh, significant damage from Divinity. The bottom floor is going to be their best chance. Kill you without having a unit deployed. That's good. I go up top. So do I double them down here? I think I do.
Queen can't even survive one turn in play here. I'm not sure I want to play her then. Although she'll make Rage Imps for me. That's kind of important. Hmm. Could play her with Fortify? Can't say I like those odds. But if she's not stacking armor in the middle, who will? that important? I think the, the fact that she can kill my armor imp every turn is kind of important. Although maybe I could sweep to deal with that. We'll leave her out of the deck rotation for a moment. Okay, we'll be a lot deadlier now. So... Any way to keep this Dante alive? Looks like no is the resounding and terrifying answer here. You don't have the defense to stay alive. However, everything on this floor is dying. That is good and noteworthy. Somebody's got to start doing something up top even if it sucks. Fifteen. From what? Oh yeah, five plus. Yep. So none of this will do a whole lot. I guess it's going to increase the amount of damage Divinity takes significantly. Proved to be an okay thing. I really need Dante to stay alive this turn. Good, we have a way to do it. Spikes are extra yikes. You're dying up top too, huh? Spooky. I can daze the divinity, though. That's important. With tiresome climb here. Here, you're gonna go to the middle floor. Actually, we're gonna play this Wilder Helper here first. This first. Oh, wait. Not quite how I want it. This is still a net game, though. Send to the Spike Lady, too. That was also an option here. Very much like what I ended up with, though. I 
that's right. This is less damage because Shardtail Queen is not making new imps. Well, unfortunate. Looking really good now. Really, really good. We're after, actually. He's <laughs> already dead. All right. I think we're in fine shape here, then. Okay. So you can stay alive a little longer. Tail Queen is back. Seems similarly difficult to keep her alive. Something weird is happening here, though. If I wanted. Let's get back that last echo break. We're actually using all of those attacks also. Liar for one more turn, sir. If I'm not sure that I need them. Get him. Doesn't even live for one turn. 30 health is so little on her. Oh well. I have a 
a sad statement that I'm winning the Shardtail Queen run by not playing Shardtail Queen. Not a lot left of our forces, though. Run. 350 attack power on that boy. GG. Hey there. If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And before you go, join us on Twitch and watch live. I'm there five days a week playing Slay the Spire, answering questions, and chilling with the community. Click the link in the description to follow right now. Ta-ta for now.